The Crash Course Podcast is brought to you in part by DerbyParks.com. The Crash Course Podcast is brought to you in part by DerbyParks.com. Smash Masters, Derby Parks, and Derby Inc. Magazine. Live it, breathe it, be it, Derby Inc. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FingerLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now your host, Chris Marquardt. Good afternoon, good day, good evening, depending on when you might be joining us. This is the Crash Course Live, coming to you from the Topeka Expo Center on FingerLakes1.com. We are in Topeka, Kansas, working with Ultimate Derbies for... Blizzard Bash 2013, presented by Speedway Motors and O'Reilly Auto Parts. This has been an incredible adventure for us. Um, we went through the morning session again uh, today, and it was it was once again something that didn't leave anything to be desired. Um, Josh Decker joining me here at the table with um, renowned builder and uh, car inspector Ben Host. Ben made the trip out with us since uh, Brian couldn't make the trip. Unfortunately, something came up at the 11th hour, and, and he could not make the trip, but... Uh, Ben, thankfully, was here to tell us a little bit about what we were seeing because it's like nothing we've ever seen at home. Yeah, let's give a shout-out to Brian uh, because, yeah, Ben is here today, and Ben definitely knows his stuff, Brian. So <laughs> luckily he is here because he's helped me definitely through the day. I don't know what I was looking at in the back room there, but uh, it was pretty neat, some of the stuff back there. There was some pretty crazy stuff out there in the inspection lines for the team derbies. Um, we had a morning session today. It included the heats for the 80s cards. There were six qualifying heats for the 80s division. It was a great, great round of qualifying. Um, saw some interesting things. I saw one guy that was black flagged, a driver of car number nine, was tossed out and was not able to continue because he failed to keep up the pace with the fellows that were also out there with him. Running down through the qualifying for the 80s class, he's Dookie Scratch and Colton Newhalfen in qualifying heat number one, Justin Worsig and Shea Walden, a couple names that we did recognize in qualifying heat number two. They only took two cars out of all six of the heats, except for heat number three, where they took three of them. Uh, Zach Staver won overall, but Nathan Shields in the 28X and Bob DeRusso in car number 84. What was the reason for that, Chris? They were doing it just they were because stuck. of... They're, okay. they're, those two were stuck together. They're they both stuck. basically okay. went out at the same time. Um, I'm pretty sure it was that was their logic. I mean, yeah. th- that was what they said. The announcers stand. Um, Zach Pribel and uh, Jack Pribel, Zach Pons were out of Heat Four. Um, Rob Hewer, Jason Grismore. Jason Grismore was given the transfer spot after uh, the driver of the 113C bagged his way through. Didn't do a whole lot. Let his teammate and running partner do all the dirty work, and ultimately paid the price and was not given the runner-up position in the qualifying spot. Um, another one of those examples where th- they made a hard decision, but they made the right decision. That driver was Eddie Chick. They were out of, out of Missouri. So that was interesting to see how that whole dynamic played out. And Zach, he earned every bit of that qualifying spot anyway. Yeah, you know, there's you can't, you can't uh, no, no knocking the guys that, that got called out for sandbagging, but if you watch the heat, it was obviously two-on-one. One of the guys is definitely working a lot harder, and the guy was really bagging. So, you know, I, I think if they would have let him go on, you would have heard the crowd booing in one of those. That was one of those situations. And the last guy, that the guy that they give him the transfer spot, he was running hard. He, was, he, he knew he was outmatched there, and uh, I, they definitely made the right call in my mind. No, oh, definitely. I mean, that guy was... <laughs> He had one nasty, nasty, older, like mid '80s Lincoln that was built, and he just he didn't use it. Right. You know, and, and when you got a car like that out here, you, you needed to at least use it some because it, I mean, Sam proved his point. I mean, you're not going to get away with it, and uh, there's a lot on the line, and you got to you got to use it. No, absolutely, and especially when it's down to three cars. I understand that we're all trying to keep our cars as fresh as we can, but you got you and your partner. And these guys are lollygagging. Just finish them. Finish them, finish them, finish them. I didn't understand that. And, you know, that's what happens right here. We saw why you never – you have to step it up right there at the end in, in that circumstance. The other the name of the other guy that was tossed out was in the final qualifying heat. It was driver of car number nine. It was Doug Gibson. He's from right here in Kansas. And uh, he was asked to leave, the, uh, leave his car shut off from this point forward after he was uh, – not keeping up the pace, and, and again, it's not a popular decision, but it was the right one. It was a fair one. They were they were keeping that, um, keeping that theme throughout the day's morning session. We've been inspecting lawnmowers and Power Wheels cars here the last two hours. We've been working on the team cars. All the team cars are getting ready to go for their second round of qualifying events. It is a double elimination, so we will be losing um, a handful of the teams here again tonight. 
and they're going to be loading up in the trailer. But I still think that I, I got to believe that they're going to stick around and watch the rest of it because we still got the big one coming up on Sunday. Oh, I don't. There's not a person that's here this weekend that's going home early. I can't imagine. No. You know, everybody here is staying to watch every single heat right to the end. I mean, this really has been a next level derby in every aspect. Once again, this is a web exclusive for uh, for Finger Lakes One and, and the Crash Course Live. We are going to be back in this same spot with the Ustream feed with Blizzard Bash on their pay per view stuff. Go to the Blizzard Bash website, www.blizzardbash.com. You can find all the information there to get the pay per view. There's going to be a free pre race and free post race shows, but but the um, the uh, huh, I got the wrong graphic up there. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> hey, I called <laughs> oh, it. man. Put yeah, good job. <laughs> I gotta sh- like shave my head. Brian, there it is. Post with Decker. We're there bumping we go. you. That's fine. There, uh, there. You go. <laughs> At least we did that. Well, for a while, I didn't think that Ben was even gonna come on, but Ben, well, we I think you. Ben got pretty acclimated to the microphone as we were going through the 80 seats. He got more and more at ease with it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm normally a pretty quiet guy when it comes to being in front of a camera or a microphone, but you know, it, it, it's it's. I'm catching on a little bit, so. You know, Ben, we've had a lot of good guys on the show in the past, and, and you know, you hear them say, like, no one really cares what I have to say, but I, I think people really are interested in what you have to say. Everyone knows you're a good builder, and, um, you know, coming to see these cars, I think everyone really is interested in what you think of everything. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate that. Um, I don't know. I, usually compliments to me don't, are few and far between when I, sometimes, but... Uh, I've been coming out to these shows and, and shows like this for a long time. Um, I'm not going to say I was the first one out of our area to do it, but um, it seems like when I go to a lot of the bigger shows, within a couple of years, a lot of other people go out to them. You know, sure. And just because I come back from a show, a lot of people ask, and I just, you know, I'm the type of person. If you want to know something, ask me. And I'll tell you. Sure. It's <laughs> it doesn't make a difference what it is. You know. From building derby cars to what'd you see, what'd you find, and what do you think, you know? And boy, did we see a lot. Oh, yeah. We've it, seen a lot. There's There's been plenty to see. You know, yep. this afternoon's program begins at 6 o'clock. We're, we're about, oh, hour and a half or so away from, from go time. The program tonight is going to have the 80s Constellation event, the round two, round two for the teams. Uh, there's going to be the youth division, which are full-size cars. We, we made some friends out there with a shocker, pink and black shocker. We'll be seeing him a little later on, maybe. Uh, the powder puffs, the power wheels, the lawnmowers, and then the feature for the 80s cars. And then the midnight oil gets lit. And from 10 until 1 a.m., you're allowed to work on your team cars before everything goes into lockdown again. And then from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning until noon, once again, you have another opportunity to work on the team cars. And then they do the inspections for the modified compacts, the pro mods, the old iron, and the new, uh, the, uh, the no-weld cars. We'll actually be getting at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We'll probably do a pre-race show for Finger Lakes 1 around 1.30 local time. No, it'd be 12.30, 12.30 local time, and then we'll do the hour pre-race show with uh, Blizzard Forecast for Blizzard Bash right back here on uh, on the Ustream feed. It's been a very busy couple days. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> My brain is on such overload. I mean, really, you walk away from one thing, and you're thinking about it, and then you walk right into something else, and you're like, oh, my God, and you start thinking about it, and it's thing to thing to thing, and it's just such an overload. I'm glad I took so many pictures. I really can't wait to go back and, and think about everything I looked at. Yeah, it's 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 just so cool being down in the in a inside pit area where all the power wheels, all the kids are down there driving their power wheels in, and, you know, Josh and I are outside, and, and they're bringing them down the road, and, and you know they're driving their power wheels in, and, and it was the, cool. the, two, the one kid spins the other kid out, driving them, you know, coming in, and yep. I mean it, they're just it's a good thing, and it, it's a blast, and in in uh, uh, the mowers, the mowers. <laughs> that one mower sounded like a Harley, didn't it? Yeah, I mean I've seen mowers. We watched mowers. I've seen mowers out to Ohio, and, and but you know there's a lot of younger kids running these mowers that I noticed, you know. And Do you think those kids that we saw driving them in are going to run them? I think so, Oh, my yeah. gosh, that's and, crazy. What are these parents? You know what? Where are their parents? <laughs> they helped them build the mower. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It's just it's, it's ridiculous, you know. It's 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 awesome, really, in no, a way. One of the coolest things was uh, Ben and I were down there near the inspection line, and they were pulling the kids in on the power wheels. And i got to say, to, to look at all these kids in a line, Waiting for their turn. Then they well, get how the cool is it they put them up on the lift? Dude, they put that them up on, on the lift. lift. They no pick doubt. the lift up. Yeah. I mean, these kids, the smiles on their face, you can see they're nervous because they're going through inspection. And they're not kicking kids out for anything. You know, they're just they're just doing it. But, boy, the, 
That was awesome. I mean, I would love to bring my kid to that. And boy, right. I wish they had that when we were kids. Imagine being a kid. I would have been at well, every they did power have wheel it. That's derby. the thing, though, Josh, is they did have it when you were a kid, but you just did it with all your neighbor friends. You didn't actually well, do it with true. other derby kids. <laughs> you know, that's true. Oh, for sure. You know, and, and, it's a little bit different having the opportunity to do it with other derby kids like this. But think about being six years old and getting a pull on this track. I mean, these kids are going to be besides themselves. They're going to have little helmets on. I'm, They're going to drive all the way through I'm the 31 store. years old and I got to walk out on that track and I was beside myself. Yeah, no, yeah. really. I mean, it's really been a great event. Just really yeah. cool. Sam's really got his finger on the pulse of Derby right now. Yeah, and he, and, and he was having a lot of fun. I mean, we are down there and I had the chance to, to, to actually watch him a little bit through one of a few of me, put him up on the lift, and he was having a good time with it. I mean, he was joking with the kids and, you know, you know, messing with the parents, you know, and, and uh but it, and that's what it's all about. Well, when, how many, got, when you can carry a good sense of humor like that throughout the whole thing, and I mean, don't get me wrong, he's been the inspection crew and them guys have been nonstop pretty much. I mean, inspecting right. cars and dealing with that, and to still be able to keep a sense of humor like that, I mean, that's 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 it's just he's a top notch guy, top-notch absolutely, promoter. absolutely, and um, and that's that's getting it's a rare thing when events this big, and it's a big one. No, Man, you know, is it a big one. You know, but really, he's got his teams. He's got his group of guys. That everyone's doing something else for exactly. him. I mean, he's really thought this through. There's really, I don't see any slop, any screw-ups. I mean, everything's been running real but smooth. But he still puts a personal touch on it. I agree. He's, he's still there. He's still into it. And he's not just a, a finger-pointing guy. Right. You know, he wants to be involved with it, and, and that's the way to be. Yeah. We've had some really good meetings with some of the guys, and, and hopefully we've put some stuff together that's going to be entertaining for the, the folks on the Ustream. Um, feed. The vendors area is still open. See, the arena has not yet opened up to the public. We're, we're, we're about maybe 15, 20 minutes away from the doors actually opening. And then, then this place is going to fill up quick. Uh, in that time frame, they're also going to start chasing everybody out of the vendors area, and, and they're going to get them into their seats here inside the arena. It's just going to let all the vendors free up. We might be we might have the opportunity to talk to one of the guys from Hoffmeister up here. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Mark Klein from Derby Tees might be stopping back by. I believe we're going to be talking to the folks from Baldwin Racing Engines Sweet. who are raffling off a stripped engine block. I bought a bunch, a bunch of raffles. <laughs> I bought a bunch. <laughs> How many times did you go to the ATM today? I uh, lost track. It doesn't matter because we're bringing something home. Yeah. One of us is bringing something home. As long as we bring the truck home, we'll be good. That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we'll get the truck home. <laughs> Moving on. And then uh, and we're also maybe going to be talking with Brian near it. Now, their schedules are all subject to change because you don't know what's going to happen with one of the cars. If they have an engine out there that has an issue, then that team is going to be pulling them aside. So we're going to tentatively call that schedule to appear. But some pretty big names that want to come and, and hang out with us on the crash course, and, and we like that. You know, We look forward to that, and hopefully that can, um, can turn into something where you know, we get more people tuning into the crash course, and that's always a good thing for, mm-hmm. for us here and, and us on Finger Lakes 1. I'm so glad that we've had so much interaction with the fans. Um, a future guest. He hasn't been on the show yet. I believe it's going to be the second week of December. Yeah, it's the second week of December. It's a Christmas list show when we have a bunch of vendors on the program. Scott Cook. I saw on his Facebook, he's talking about putting a car together to come out here and run. Tom Dowd has been with us the whole time. Just just constantly. I mean, I don't think he's been away from his computer other than maybe to go to the bathroom. He probably hasn't showered <laughs> in three days. Just He's just been eating all this stuff up. Um, we got... Uh, Rick Engelhart and Rich uh, Predmore yep. and Brett Ray have all sent us messages. Brian's yep. been messaging. I know Mark us. Benjamin and his father are out there watching us too. Chase Mollering, he stopped by. He was and he was in the stands. We had Cody Vosmer and and Brad Carson, which are guys from around the Midwest that know about the podcast back home. Uh, Mike DeFrisha, who we have to we have to make a mention. There's some pretty cool stuff going on that we need to uh, we need to share with you guys. Um, he sent me some information. Mike's from out in Pennsylvania, and he sent me some information through Facebook that I think you guys are going to be pretty excited about. Um, there's a new TV show coming focused around demolition derby cars, and that's something that everybody is going to be ready to eat up. It's going to air starting on, I believe, the 19th of December. Yep, 19th of December at 9 o'clock on GAC. That's Great American Country Channel. It's called Farm Kings, and they built them a derby car. And that's what the program's going to be about. He, and he messaged us that from in Topeka here, and he lives out in Pennsylvania. So, again, the show, December 19th, 9 p.m. on Great American Country. It's called Farm Kings, and um, Mike DeFrisha built them the derby car that's going to be featured on that particular episode. Nice. So, nice. you know, pretty cool that some of our local guys, Mad Mike's Derby Shop, uh, is going to be featured on that. Um, you know, we'll get you try and get you some more information. Uh, Great American Country is carried on Time Warner Cable, which is what you guys are going to want to know about back home. Um it is, it is on there. It's one of the way, way, way up channels, though. I don't remember what the number is. But I was excited to see that. He sent me a message about it, and he said he was going to stop by. We might even get a chance to have him on 
during the during the evening's program because there's a lot of action on deck. Oh yeah. Oh, and just the, there's a lot of big name guys here, and and it's funny you don't you don't think all the names that you've heard in Derby until you start seeing them all over the place. Or a guy says, "Here's that guy, here's that guy," and there's a lot of great guys, and they just come up and talk to you just like a normal guy, which is awesome. I'm glad everybody's been like Arden, real low key, like Arden. Arden, Arden, awesome. Arden, Arden, Arden yeah, Jennings. We got we, we'll, we'll give Brian another tribute. We'll give him a shout out. Do a shout out to oh, Arden. What are you doing? <laughs> no, here's Arden's the, cool. Man. There's, there's a particular art of a shout out. You need to understand this. And I'm going to do this here so that everybody at home can understand it too. When somebody Teacher texts said. you, when somebody texts you and says, "Mention my name." Work them into the conversation. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to break this conversation. And, and shout out. out. Yeah, shout out. We're not going to do that. <laughs> we're, we're not, we're not going to do that. Uh, you know, but we've had some great guys in <laughs> conversations. I'm not going to keep going. I tried to be serious about <laughs> yeah. it. Right now. Uh, just keep going. Uh, no, it's been good. This, so this, was Gravedigger pulling it for a second? What just happened there? I'm pretty sure I just heard the first three bars of Bad to the Bone. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure yeah. what happened there okay. either. Okay. We're going to... Just cruise past yeah, they're out there marking off the uh, Power Wheels Derby track. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing is, is this is just this has just been. I, I mean, I gotta thank Chris for letting me come out, um, give me the opportunity to come out. And I believe I, uh, you, you misspoke. You said let, and you met begged. Begged Chris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember getting a phone call. And, uh, but please, any, but please, anyway, please it's, come. It's it's been a it's been a, a awesome experience. I always have a ton of fun when I go to derbies, when I go to bigger shows, and. Uh, these guys, I mean, it, <laughs> we should have uh, had a camera in the truck on the way out. I mean, it was, we just, it was a good time, and uh, the road trip back is going to be long, but you know what? It was worth it. There's a well, lot. It's we're already have, worth it. Yeah, There's, we're going to have a lot to talk yeah. about. I'm going to be on my phone the whole way back. Yeah. You know, I got I, so much I, going I on. I got to look head. at Josh's phone, because um, <laughs> he, he kept that with him the whole time today. Hasn't let that out of his sight. He's been on dude, all day. Dude, I'm And here. he had 230 new text messages. Yeah, We're I at mean, 263 right now. How many <laughs> how many friend requests did you get, Josh? <laughs> well, I don't know. What's, what's this morning we woke up with, we, or actually, as soon as we went on, on, on last night, I had seven. I had seven as soon as we got on. No, I don't have any right now. But I've had a bunch. Oh, no, I do got one. Right here, nope. I got two. Nope, three. Nope, four. They're going up as we're <laughs> yeah, okay. They're going up as yeah, we I got speak. four here. <laughs> they're going up as we speak. No, it's so cool. I mean, everyone as we're walking around, people are you know coming up and saying hi to us, and that we're doing a great job, and, and we're really the next. Hey, l- hey, you're the guy that's on TV. You're the guy on that <laughs> live stream. It's awesome. Just it making awesome. my day, dude. Yeah, <laughs> just really I mean, making my day. Because I'm like ra- walking around with royalty. Oh, you know? stop. That's just, it's, just, it's awesome. <laughs> and to you think, know? you know, these guys actually <laughs> no, think I'm good, or wait, I know what I'm gosh, talking about. Gosh, <laughs> wait, don't, don't interrupt Ben. I don't think he was done there. Go on more about the royalty. <laughs> I was done. I was done. No, it's funny because you know, a guy is just because they see us on there, they might think I'm good or something, you know. And then you get back home and you remember, you know, you remember. Well, no, this. I'm so Ready getting smoked this? everywhere. I was, I was hanging out at the hanging out uh, for a little bit at, at uh, the near Slider Shaft um, trailer, and there's a guy there in a Smash Master shirt. Yep. So that's kind of cool, you know. There's a Smash Master shirt, just kind of tuck it tuck it away in the back of my mind. And he turns around there and he goes, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I said, "I, we're just here, you know." And uh, kind of enjoying the show, he goes, "You're that guy." <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where the duck run or what. I don't know if you've ever been to a derby. But if somebody says, "Hey, that hey, yeah. you're that guy," yeah. that might not it's be not a good, good. thing. Yep. So, you know, I introduced myself, and, and we shook hands, and he goes, "You're yeah, you guys are the ones with the podcast. You've been upstairs." I said, "Yeah, yeah, we've 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 been trying to do that on live stream and then doing our own stuff." And he goes, "Well, I'm from Ontario." I drove 19 hours out there to be here. I'm like, well, you trumped us because you drove 18 hours. And I didn't bring up the exchange rate because I don't know if it's different now going across the border. If time is worth the... The time zone or not, it probably depends. But, um, he's, from, he's from near Toronto, so the time zone's the same. I mean, yeah. he, he drove a long way to be here. And um, then he says, uh, you're, uh, you're also involved with that magazine thing, right? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, I was going to order one online, but now that you're here, can I just get the, get the magazine subscription now? I'm like, absolutely. And I brought, a, brought the last ones with me. I've only got like seven left. How cool. And uh, so we were able to put him in touch with his copy of the magazine, which was, which was you know, neat to be able to accomplish that, to come all the way to Kansas and sell a subscription to Ontario. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that to happen. So cool. <laughs> And so uh, cool. great conversations going on today with uh, Mark Klein at Derby Tees and all this stuff. Um, something that uh, we haven't had the chance to spend a lot of time about. This is Junkin' for Jewels Saturday at Blizzard Bash. Um, Junkin' for Jewels is a special benefit that they do. Every year at, at Blizzard Bash, they pick um, a company and they do a, a, a group, rather, and they do some sort of benefit. And this is for a Missouri family. Um, her name is Julia. 
She's three years old. Six months ago, she was fine. Clean bill of health, no issues whatsoever. Now, uh, Julie has been diagnosed with stage four cancer. And they put together the Junkin' for Jewels program. And Derby Tea has made a special blue T-shirt. that says Junkin' for Jewels on. All the proceeds for that shirt are going to go to the family. They're also having dozens of raffles. Baldwin is raffling off a strip to engine block. There's stuff from Overkill Derby parts, stuff from Speedway, stuff from O'Reilly. All the pre- proceeds from those raffles are going back to the family. The percentage of the proceeds that all the vendors take in on their sales, a percentage of that are going back. Drivers, many of them are giving money back from their winnings back to the family. So the goal right now at this point is to send close to $20,000 back to the family. And uh, they're really pushing hard to get more more uh, more shirts in the stadium. You see like at Blue Cross, or excuse me, not Blue Cross Arena, at the Sabres games when they have you know the whiteout events and, and everybody in the facility wears a white shirt. The Phoenix Coyotes have done this before. Chicago Blackhawks have done this before. The Buffalo Bills, different football teams. They're trying to do that same thing, and everybody that shows up tonight for tonight's program, which is going to be rolling off here just about an hour, they're hoping that they'll wear the blue shirts, and they basically plant this whole facility blue for uh, for Julia. And It's a great program. Um, we certainly send our best wishes out to Julia and the Junkin' for Jewels program. You know, shows the Derby guys got some hearts, too. Now, you know, walking, uh, well, we, Ben and I went and bought some raffle tickets. They have a table, just everything you can imagine. Oh, they're going to raffle tonight. Just so much that's stuff. The reason why, that's the reason why Josh hasn't bought any Derby parts yet. He wants to see what he can win off the yeah, raffle no, table we gotta first. Say, <laughs> we gotta say, no, that's true. No, but, you know, they have a huge bin over there that they put the raffles in. And just to see how many people have obviously bought raffle tickets, they say the raffle is going 100% to this family. And it's great that the, these guys are sticking together. <laughs> You never know when something bad will happen in your life, and when someone else has it going on in their life, you got to support them as much as you can, and it's cool that we're sticking together. Oh, yeah. I mean, you never know. It's just one of them things. Anybody, any family, any, anybody, any, anybody that has kids. I mean, it, kids it's is, scary. It's you a know. scary thing, yeah. and um, I don't know anybody in the derby world that wouldn't do anything for kids. I mean, in, in another family. I mean, Well, that happened, what was it, two or three years ago um, at... The spring show at Morris, when they had that, it wasn't really a team show necessarily, but it was definitely limited weld rules. And yes, uh, yeah, Andy Wolfanger was there, and Frank yeah. Palmer was there. He had a wagon, um, yep. and Mike Adams ran there as well. It was actually a team show. It was a team show. It was a team show, and um, they had, uh, uh, I'm not sure, name-wise, I'm not good with names, but there, it was a similar similar deal. And they they um, gave a ton they, of, they just, of proceeds they just to that family. It. They just, just did it. Uh, in uh, Brookfield, uh, John King did it. At oh, for Lyman show. Reed, for right? Lyman Reed, when he his house burnt, he lost more or less everything. Mm-hmm. And um, the Derby drivers, I mean, pulled together and just it, it's. It, he got the heavy hitter bonus that night. Heavy hitter bonus. I mean, actually. No, Josh, I wasn't going to relax. I wasn't going to do that to you. He got the heavy hitter bonus. Um, <laughs> see, Lyman, Lyman had a car and he put Josh up on the wall, and, and Josh yeah, had said he was going to do it. And <laughs> now, nah, nah, but you know how cool? How cool that night was? Hippie going around. Hippie was going around with a box. Exactly. And everybody, you can throw any amount of money you want. He didn't care. Just throw some money in this box, and he all got the some money. Some coupons to, for uh, for food and that thing too. And there was somebody threw in a cigarette for him as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There that? was some humor in it, but, like, but that was cool. I mean, it was so cool that Hippie was doing that and going around. And every, you saw everyone throwing money in it, and mm-hmm. I think it was real neat that Lyman got it at the end of the night. That's cool. We were, again, sticking together. Yeah, for sure. It is good to see. We're, we're, we're just about, we've got about five minutes left here. We wanted to get something out. We had some problems this morning. We couldn't get everything quite in line the way we needed it to, but we were able to, uh, during a little bit of the intermission, so to say, this afternoon. There's no downtime here, by the way. During a little bit of the information, we got everything um, fixed and, and up and running, so we were able to get this up and running and, and off and going to you guys. And, and uh We'll probably have something again for you a little bit later on tonight. After everything wraps up here, we'll probably do something quick just to give you a recap on, on what happened. And then we'll be back again tomorrow. Like we said, probably somewhere in the 1230 range tomorrow morning. And then um, and that will probably conclude what we're going to do from uh, from Blizzard Bash because we'll get out of here, head home, and then we'll see you guys again when we do Crash Course back from the studio in Seneca Falls on Monday night. Josh, yes. you going to be there for that? You gonna come to the studio Monday night? I'm tired sit? now. I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it on the way home. We'll see. We'll see how the weekend goes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty tired uh, right now. Have you been listening to Josh talk at all? I mean, for the past two days, when he, when he talks, he giggles like he's giddy, like a school kid <laughs> being around all this stuff. You don't even know. Like growing up as a kid, I was starved for demolition derby stuff. There was just nothing. Oh, we talked. To, we talked about that earlier today on the pay per view. Yeah, I, I really was starved for it, and now and you come to something like this, and I am like in a candy store. I mean, I, 
every part of this place is awesome. I mean, everything they've done is to the top notch, and it's like, man, I really wish I was in a car. I'm winning that goddamn raffle car tonight. <laughs> Park <laughs> in the middle. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm full tracking if I win that raffle and, car. In, in the stuff that, I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, I've, I've been going to a lot of these shows for a while, and, and it doesn't matter. I still get twisted. I get wound right up. I come to these shows like this. I walk around the pits. I, I start talking to guys. It's like, dude, you, you know, never know what you learn. You know, put, you know, you learn something. You never learn. You learn ev- all the time. Every show, every single show. There's not anybody out there that can say that they know everything about derbies. No, right. it's it's a learning curve. It's an ongoing le- learning curve. Also, it's nice to hear. Uh, not only they do things different, but the reasons why they do it oh, is sure. just totally different than what you're bringing oh, yeah. things. And it's like, oh, that's a good idea. I never thought of that. Or I mean, the, the rules they have out here. Oh, I would, oh, I would love, I'd love it. I'd love it. <laughs> really? I, mean, I don't want to weld for a month. This, this, this is this is such a heavy build. I mean, you're gonna be you're gonna oh. be sunburned from from welding you flash. Really you're gonna <laughs> be working on a car for two months, and you're gonna come out here, and and it's it's very conceivable that. And this is not, I'm not knocking um, Josh here. It's very conceivable that if Josh were to build a car, he could be annihilated in a matter of minutes. I wouldn't get off. I'm telling you, when they full, when they hit nose to nose like they do, I'd be done. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I'm, I'm not going to say, say I'd kill these guys. No way. Uh, well, first, so of all, you'd have to, first of all, you'd have to bring either an Electra or a Crown Vic. If, if you're going to yeah. bring a Mopar out here, no, um, you're, you're, you're going to have to think it through. It's not, it's not a place for a unibody car. No, no it's, it's not. No, you know, it's not. The, pl- the place for that class is in the compacts in uh, full size class. If you don't have a full frame car, I mean, I, I was out looking at a, a there's a '64 Galaxy out there, and that caught my eye. And I'm like, oh, I gotta go check this out. And uh, just the different stuff I've learned from from the few Galaxies and Mercuries that I ran, the old style. Um, there's some things I would have done different, of course. Everybody does some stuff different, but. Uh, um, you know, I'm very interested to see how that's how that's going to do. You know, <laughs> it's it's just just because anybody that's run, you know, you run a similar pretty daughter. much everything other than other than the no weld division that we're going to see a little bit later on. Um, everything else is pretty much built to the same specs. Right. Everything is really really heavy here mm-hmm. across mm-hmm. the board. And, the and compacts today were outstanding. You look at some of these cars like the Galaxy that we were looking at from the back. You look at it, it's like all right, you know, nothing too crazy. But then you look inside these things, and, and the cages are insane. And every car not doesn't have one kicker, six, eight. I mean, kickers coming off the cage like you wouldn't yeah. believe. And there's just everything is to the top. I mean, every guy is pushing everything to the limit. Everything to the, the yeah. bumpers. I mean, you look at there's some GMs. We were looking at some of the old iron stuff, and you look at these GMs coming out. There's a couple of Buicks back there, and the bumpers are obviously homemade. I mean, just homemade <laughs> bumpers on the front. They're not even hiding it. They're not even putting a tin cover over the top of it. We saw shocker bumpers out there for 450 Dude, bucks. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm telling you right now, last year, last year, a rust-free pointy shocker bumper was 300 350 bucks tops. They've got three of them down there ranging from 400 to $475 in the four they're sold. One of them, yeah, I was gonna say one they're sold. sold. They're sold. Four hundred twenty-five dollar one sold. <laughs> so was the four fifty one. And <laughs> and Josh and I are like, oh yeah, Josh, you should... gotta help me lift up this bumper that I'm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Josh and I are looking at each other. I mean, Chevy bumpers, seventy-four impel bumpers. What were they? Three fifty. Yes. We, we looked at two of, two of them down there that were three hundred. I think those were marked down. And it's like, Josh and I looked at each other and we're like. Yeah. Why didn't we just bring bumpers out to sell? Josh is like, yeah, I got some cherry bumpers. I should blow them yeah, I got thousands yard. of dollars laying <laughs> yeah. in my yard. You know, I mean, years ago, I, I scrapped. That used to be the bumper I always ran on my subframe Imperials. I scrapped. I mean, I loaded them in a, in a junk Imperial. I had like nine of them I threw in there. <laughs> And it's like, I, I hate these bumpers. I'm never going to use them. But, oh, oh like, man. Just but four grand. Just, <laughs> and that's just the, the evolution of the yeah. way oh, things yeah. are going. It, it, hindsight's like... You know, what'd you do? You know, it's it, it's. But you look at these '80s cars that came out today, and I would say like 75 percent had V bumpers. You, you you see why they're going so much money? Everybody had them on the front, and, right. and for the rules, the rules there's no you, point yeah. not to. You know, there's no point not having a pointy yeah. bumper. You're not bending frame rails. I mean, when you when you can literally plate from the arms forward, you know, why not? You might as well put the strongest right. thing on there. And when yeah. we're saying plating, you know, yeah. you're. you're they're it's not what half inch. I see. It's not what you're steel. thinking. Yeah. It's it's huge. It's yeah. blading, blading. Uh, top 
sides all the way back to the A arms, then hooked to the bumper. The the you know I see they're all tilted. All of them GMs out there are tilted. Yes, and 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 that's the thing. There's nothing here but, that's not tilted, is no, it? No, I don't. No. But the key is right. is that that is, and we got talking to one guy, and he says that's Sam's rules. That's there's there's certain you have measurements. There's certain dimensions you have to use. In um, the county fairs, or the same he, that he runs, or the same thing. He runs the same rules as at the county fairs, so these guys know exactly what they can do. And uh, and you know they're not. It's not like a plate fest. I mean, they have certain they have certain requirements they have to meet. Yeah, they tell you what you can and can't do, right. and if you if you do what you weren't supposed to do, you're done. Exactly. You get put on the and trailer. They proved it. Yeah, they yeah, backed yeah, that yeah. up. Well, they, yep. they sent five. They sent five cars home. They they sent an entire team home. Yeah, and, and that's because a, five cars were illegal. There there was there was two individually, and then there was two additional, um, two additional cars. So it was a total of six cars that that were loaded and, up. And, and that's and that's a no nonsense. Uh, you have to have it to, at, at a show. And when you go back there, it looks like all cars are pretty. Even, I yes. mean, you can see some cars that guys did some uh, lazy things, maybe, or things that maybe I wouldn't have done. Or, that, but for the most part, they all look pretty much oh, yeah. same down the line. Yep. I mean, it does look even. It's yeah. it's pretty impressive when you look at, at what was out there. Let's just take the compacts by itself. The standard compacts, standard compacts. There was a guy out there that had a, a I don't even know what year. I believe it was a Cadillac bumper on the back that went all the way up to the top and. Uh, he didn't even register under a particular name. It was number Y four. It was Booger. Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> I know. A, it was oh, Booger. <laughs> and he had a he had a four door Cadillac, and he had a he had an old 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 Cadillac bumper on it. He looked yeah. like he had cut in half, welded together, and then put it on the back of his car. Yeah, and that's okay. It, there was there was one of those. Uh, I think it was the Ford Mustang. That one of the Ford Mustangs that was out there had a shocker bumper on the front of it. That Mustang was nasty, right? Is that the gray one that was yeah, out there? Was oh, an man. That motor, again, another little four-cylinder motor just screaming across that track. One of the one of the compacts, uh, Tim Loans was his name. He was number 02. Got sent up over the berm and just about landed in the lap of one of the Bobcat operators in the compact division earlier oh, yeah, today. He, that was amazing. He wasn't expecting that. No. <laughs> yeah, I, no. Actually, I think he was on the way of getting out of the Bobcat. He was just about to get out. I mean, he, he, he found a seat again. Yeah, well, real fast. <laughs> Real fast. Oh, and, uh, I, I don't remember who almost ran over Sam, but Sam almost got taken out by one of the full size cars. Yep. During the, during yeah, the you 80s. Gotta, you got to be on your toes. They, they've got this track in just about perfect condition once again. A lot of track prep activity was, was done during this afternoon's intermission. You see that the, the berm is a little bit taller now, almost all the way around the perimeter, and that again is, is an effort to keep the cars in, in the arena and not from jettisoning out of bounds. And also, we've got some got some different marks where they've been packed down a little bit tighter. The skid steers were just about 35 degrees up the angles there, and they were putting all sorts of tire marks down and, and using their weight to pack that even tighter. So are they going to hit that? Are they going to stop? Are they going to hit that? It's being so hard. Is it going to launch them up into the air? It remains to be seen. Well, you know, I think a lot of times at big derbies like this, as the night goes or the weekend goes, the track starts to deteriorate. But these guys are so on top of it. Well, during intermission, I saw the Bobcats out there going up and down on those walls, tightening all those walls back up. Because throughout the the last two days, we've watched virtually that everywhere on that wall get hit and soften up. But now they got them back to being hard as a rock right now. And, again, this track is, like, brand new like it was Friday night. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, guys are getting sent over them. On them. We had one rollover so far, only one. Looked like there was another one. That there was yep. a, one of the '80s car got up on the back of, of one of his fellow competitors, but the halo bar did its job and kept the roof up, and nobody was hurt there. And in the compact division, uh, one of the zero car Ford uh, ended up backing into another guy after he was shoved the length of the track by a Booger, and it and it flipped both of them over, which was pretty and, crazy. And, and, and by no means just because they're dirt walls. Don't mean they're they're like concrete. Oh no, they're bending. I mean, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's guys. I mean, they're a tool. I mean, they're a usable tool in a heat. I mean, you get somebody going down through there backwards. I mean, you. I watched it. I mean, a bull drew hump straight out of a couple of Vicks uh, last yeah. night. You know, it just backing them into the wall. And again, you're seeing where the good drivers are because oh, yeah. the good drivers know this track or this setup where. They get that shot, they take it, they hold it, they let them guys spin themselves a nice hole, yep. back up, and there you sit. There you sit. You're done. And again, it's, it's, uh, it's fun to watch some of these drivers. Well, we need to transition now from the Crash Course podcast, which was specifically done right now for Finger Lakes 1. It's going to be available on the website, www. Uh, 
podcast.fingerlakes1.com forward slash cat crash course. That's going to be up immediately. We're going to take a short, maybe two or three minute break, and then we're going to transition into Blizzard Forecast. Talk a little bit about what we see coming up and, and what we have seen so far. That'll be about an hour long, and then we'll get into this evening's program. So for Ben Host and Josh Decker, I appreciate you joining us here on this edition of Crash Course Live. We are going to be back with you here in just a little bit. Uh, if everybody wants to take a few minutes, get out of our Finger Lakes 1 stream, transition over to the Ustream feed for Blizzard Bash. We'll be seeing you here in just a few moments. <laughs> 